That's the thing about Toronto. There are always cameras. There always have been. But behind every frame, there's a story too. In their minds, fans and the media have a picture of trade deadline day. But their vision of the day has developed into something very different than what it looked like years ago. One thing that hasn't changed is the hope of Leafs Nation, as colorful as ever, especially when the deadline nears. day for the Maple Leafs on the trade market. Paul Hendrick alongside Bob McGill here in the press box at the Air Canada Centre. And Bob, Nathan Horton coming to Toronto, David Clarkson going to Columbus, and it appears at this point in time it is a business deal with both organizations. Five days before the deadline, Dave Nonis and Leafs management shocked the hockey world with the biggest Leafs deal this year. David Clarkson to Columbus for Nathan Horton. Surely the biggest names and contracts to be dealt. Well, a business deal, money for money, I guess, uh, in terms of what happened with Cl uh, Clarkson and Columbus. Well, the money lined up, which was a big part of it. I believe in David. I think he's going to go there and play well. Um, I think he's going to go fit in with that group and and have the impact there that uh, we had hoped he would have here. But um, we were in a situation where it, it, uh, it wasn't working out as well as we had hoped or that he had, had hoped. And uh, he recognized that. He had to waive um, his no move to go there. And, and I think he felt that, uh, that it was a good move for, for him to do that as well. So, yeah, it's... it's Clarky was a... a a real good guy in our dressing room. He's a guy who's got a lot of experience, played a long time in the league, and anytime you lose a teammate, it's it's difficult. He's a he's a good guy for sure. Um, I was excited when they when they brought him in here, and uh, obviously things didn't didn't go his way here. So I, I mean, I haven't got a chance to speak to him yet, but I'm sure he's happy to have a fresh start and and um, kind of clean slate somewhere else. I know he did whatever he could to be a successful Maple Leaf, and I don't blame him for anything that happened here. He scored 30 goals in a season in this league. He's a very good player, and uh, I mean, you guys don't see how good of a teammate he is behind closed doors and in the room. So he's he's definitely a tough guy to lose. But I'm excited for him to, you know, get a fresh start over there, and I hope uh, I hope he succeeds. I, I know how happy he was to be a Leaf. It was a big deal to him to come here. Uh, he turned down more money and and different uh, teams to, to play in his hometown. So I think that was a disappointing part for him. It's a part of the business that's very unfortunate. It's tough to see guys go. But I said this morning that we've put ourselves in this position where we're at in the standings. 
and there's going to be changes. Okay, Dave, I'm just here uh, to answer a few questions, just a quick reminder to turn off any cell phones that might interrupt the conference. All right, first of all, thanks for coming. Always a long day, but glad it's over with. Now we can move forward with the remaining games in our schedule. Uh, today we made some small adjustments, and coupled with what we've done over the last, like I said, the last couple weeks, we're, we're, we're pretty happy with where we are, and now we have to focus on the future. We're going to move players based on the ability to make our team better. It's not a fire sale. There isn't a date. Where we finish uh, this year and where we are uh, at the end and, and where we're going to be picking, that's going to whatever happens. Gonna happen. The Leafs AHL club is clearly a part of the big picture. As of the trade deadline, 11 players had suited up for both the Marlies and the Leafs this season. Last June, T.J. Brennan was the AHL's best defenseman, a huge part of the Marlies' run to the conference finals. A free agent, he signed with the Islanders in July, hoping to get a much-deserved shot at the NHL. He was traded to the Blackhawks at the end of training camp. The Hawks sent him to Rockford and finally traded him back to Toronto in February. For T.J., it's all part of the journey. You're really not sure. Uh what's going to be coming ahead, but the only thing you can do is prepare as best you can. I, I can't explain how ecstatic I am to be back in Toronto here. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an organization that I, I, I really believe in, I truly believe in, and I, uh, I, I, I feel is on their way to really great things. And uh, it's the center of you know, hockey. It's the center of the, the hockey world. So what better place to be in? The journey that I've been through that's led me to now I picked a spot with the Islanders and uh, it seemed like the best fit. I wanted to believe and, and truly believe that I was ready for the NHL and getting traded to Chicago uh, just totally threw me for uh, you know a spin. I'll, I'll be honest, it was really hard to, to get a good grasp of reality and um, really understand what my purpose was and, and where everything was going. You know, you think you've been through maybe all the speed bumps and everything and that your time has come and sometimes it's a little longer than you think. So. Uh, you know, Toronto has really been uh, the place that has felt like home. So coming back here, um, it just feels right. I don't know how else to explain that. You know, uh, hopefully, you know, that'll lead to some really great things. The Marlies added another piece to their playoff run before the deadline. Brendan Leipzig led the CHL in scoring in 2012 and was having a good AHL rookie year in Milwaukee when he was acquired as part of the trade that sent Cody France and Mike Santarelli to Nashville. Our assistant GM was the one who kind of broke the news to me that I was straight here and then uh, my agent phoned me and just uh, kind of gave me the rundown what was going to go on, um, talked to Kyle Dubas and then just, uh, you know, the team services guy, how I would get here, what hotel I'd be at. Um, it was definitely a hectic day. I know my phone was blowing up at a bunch of texts and stuff like that, but um, it was an exciting time. I was in Milwaukee, nothing bad in Milwaukee, but it was a great place to play and they were really good to me. But you come to a place like Toronto and everything's just, you know, maximized and, um, you know, the equipment guys, the trainers, you know, they have, they have more of them just because, you know, they have more resources here in Toronto, which is, uh, which is awesome. But, um, you know, it's, for what I've seen, it's, uh, it's a first class organization and it's been really good. Um, you know, I know when I got traded, you know, the Twitter blew up. I know my Twitter was going off and stuff like that. Um, so I guess that's kind of just a little bit of a taste of what might be, might be in store to come. I almost got like 3,000 followers in a couple days. It was pretty crazy. Um, you know, once that kind of set in that you could maybe one day play for Leafs, uh, it was really cool. Lippi's, uh, you know, uh, fortunately I get to play with him now. You know, he's, uh, I think he's, you know, he's, he's been a nightmare for, uh, for me this whole first uh, half or 
three quarters of the you know the season. Um, you know they they had a really great team in Milwaukee there, and uh, unfortunately we had to see them almost it seemed like every weekend. So he was a, a really huge part of that team. I know a couple times playing against each other this year down in Milwaukee and Rockford. Uh, he he dashed me up a couple times when I was on the ice. Uh, you know, he's got a great shot, he's a good power play guy, um, you know, he's a good locker room guy too, you know, he's not afraid to speak up or something like that when something's going wrong or something, so um, obviously uh, a welcome addition for sure. You know, I want to still believe I'm young at 25, but I guess I, still, I am starting to become that veteran guy or something, you know, I don't know what to really title myself, but, um, you know, I, I always want to let people and have people have an understanding that I'm always here to talk and um, you know, be as much of a support system or, or helper in any way that I can because, you know, it, it, no, no one wants to feel that feeling of not being wanted or, or, you know, not feeling a part of things. We're down here, we're all trying to make the NHL, so, but right now we're focused, you know, just on playing for the Marlies, trying to, you know, develop chemistry and stuff like that, and hopefully one day we can all get a chance to play for the Leafs. Morning practice at Air Canada Centre. For the team and the media, just another day at the office. But for 12 members of Leafs Nation, it was so much more. It was a chance to get a close-up. There are a lot of different perspectives in the Toronto Maple Leafs, but none of them more important than the fans. It was a perfect Monday, I'll tell you that much. It was one of a kind. To come here and seeing all this happen, come to ACC, sit right behind the player's bench, it was an unreal experience. I mean, I've never been to a hockey game. To be that close to the players that you watch on TV was a, a very emotional experience. It's like, like you could almost touch them. Like you wanted to touch them, right? So we, we met at gate two at 10 o'clock, and then we went to watch the Leafs practice for an hour. And then we went to the Leafs dressing room. We met a couple of players there. Guys, right, welcome. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Guys about to, you guys coming in here to check it out? Uh -huh. You guys excited? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Has anyone ever been in here before? No. 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 You know, you guys did see some guys uh, in here doing what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe a couple guys will have their shirts off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> to stand in the dressing room. You know, their dressing room and the visitors to know how many teams had experienced being in there. It's like, it was great. I got to see David Booth, which was really nice. Never met any of the players before, and he was extremely, extremely nice, and I like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little massage back okay. there. Hey <laughs> guys, this is uh, assistant to the general manager, Brandon Pridham. Yeah, welcome. You guys, I'm sure, have read and seen lots of things in the news, some true, some not. Um, but we'll see where we go. We have a, a good vision on what we want to do, and uh, I think you know over some time here we'll we'll get things back to, to where it should be. And you guys are going to Real Sports for for lunch? Yes. Oh, that'll be fun. Okay, join me for lunch or what? I'm the clerk. Hi right, guys. Oh, oh, hey. How are you? Oh, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. I think my favorite part was probably the dressing room and meeting Wendell Clark. It was a very, very wonderful experience. I'm so glad I came. Wendell Clark signed my shirt. <laughs> I'm going to a free game. I'm getting a free meal. I got to go in the dressing room, practice, and it's all free just for going on the page and, and signing up. So. It's a great thing for the Leaf fans, you know, that some fans, I mean, we've come all the way from Windsor, it's well worth it. There are other ways to see this team too. Just outside the head coach's office, Mark Phelan watches every frame of every game. You know, we're breaking the game down pretty detailed so that 
we can make corrections and adjustments uh, in game and, and after the periods. And then from there we take it uh, for post game for teaching and system play and things like that. And, uh, and we'll archive clips that we want to keep that might be important for the next time we play that team. So there's a lot of diligent work that comes with that. And, you know, you have to pay really close attention to things during the game and, and there's always things coming in from the bench. I think it's something that's developed over probably the last 10 years. Teams have really started to build full staffs that, that carry out all the video operations for their teams. F for us at least, you know, we, we, we use it a lot. Like we're constantly watching video, breaking games down, things like that. I think you heard that. It's something you have to be passionate about in order to to stay in this business. It's a grind during an 82 game season and if it's not something you love to do then, then I don't know that it would be fulfilling to most people but to me it is and I think you could ask anybody in that room you know and, and they'd all tell you the same thing you know when it's a passion it doesn't really feel like it's uh, anything too taxing it's just part of your, your life it's awesome. Chris has a way different view upstairs you know being the eye in the sky and, and I've done that before too is you have a, a total view of the ice and you can pick things up a lot quicker than sometimes on TV. But things happen so fast on the bench that, you know, they've got to be prepared for what's coming and, and, and we've got to give them that information that they need. Before coming to the Leafs organization, Phelan was the director of hockey operations for the Northeastern University Huskies. Recently in Boston, the Leafs got a chance to practice at Northeastern's Matthews Arena, the oldest indoor rink in the United States. Now home to the Huskies hockey and basketball teams, a few of the current Leafs played here as visitors when playing college hockey, including James Van Riemsdyk and Trevor Smith, who played for the University of New Hampshire. A lot of character in these old rinks. This is one of my favorite uh, away rinks to come play at, for sure. You know, you come into this rink and you have a little practice and, you know, it brings you right back to the, your college memories. You know, we are talking college stories in the dressing room about, you know, when you're going up, what rinks you're playing at. So uh, a couple college stories had a couple laughs with the boys, for sure. I had just graduated uh, school in, uh, I believe it was 2008, looking for jobs like most other kids. and. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to come here to work uh, with Greg Cronin. Well, Tony, it's not all the time for you, huh? This is it, buddy. This is it? Yeah, this is it. It's nice It's pretty cool, isn't it? I loved every minute of being here. It was a, it was a special place and had a lot of fun. There, there were always great battles between uh, New Hampshire and, and Northeastern. It was a day trip into the, into the city and we come play Northeastern. And, uh, and I remember warm-ups, just you know, the student section up, up above, just right above us here, actually. Always pretty rowdy, pretty loud, the whole extent, the whole game, and uh, it's always a good atmosphere coming here. Coming in here is special. It's like uh, it's like coming into a cathedral. You know, it's a when you walk in here and you see the banners for the Bruins and and uh, the Celtics, and knowing that it was built in I think 1910, uh, it's as old as Fenway Park. So it's it's neat. You know, I think I, I'd be hard pressed to find anybody that walk in here and not say, "Wow, this is pretty cool." You know, and, and knowing the history behind it. The focus is on where we're headed. And that's why you can remain positive and remain upbeat, and it's, it's where we want to get to. And this is all part of the process, and everything is, is being looked at, not just looking at, at what I see on the ice at each night. You know, I'm excited about some of the things I do see, and we're, we're going to build with, with, with on that. As the picture from deadline day developed, it was clear that the Leafs' future will not be sacrificed for a quick snapshot. Deadlines, rumors, stories, now the season rolls on and the focus can go back to the big picture.
Morgan. Holly. Holly. Third row beside Marty. And then Belza. Bells. Okay, then we got Fails. I I don't know how to answer that. I, I think you, from day to day, you're always, you have your head just wrapped around what that day is and, and what's going on. Like it's it's hard to step back and see the big picture sometimes because you're you're so wrapped up in today and, and you know, you're worrying from, or not worrying, but you're focused from one game to the next game and, and on your team and things happen at such a high pace that it's tough to take back that, that perspective and, and uh, but I guess sometimes it's something you might need to do. Just like in anything, it's really hard to keep that big picture in mind. I mean, it's not, it's not really hard, but sometimes when you lose it, um, things can seem like a mess and you also start putting pressure on yourself and especially with hockey and especially in a place like Toronto where people are, have so much passion that it can feel like so much more pressure. It's a really complex world you know, but it's really simple that, that for myself, I just try and be the best person I can and be as happy as I can and really believe that everything will kind of come back and, and keep giving and coming back. There's always that competitive side and that's what sports are about. You always want to win and you always want to be competitive. You want to see the players do well. You want to have a solid showing each each and every night um, and, and see this see this season through. And I know Dave's message to the players and that's exactly what it was, was to finish strong. Um, our job is to focus on where we're headed and, and what's what's coming in, in the near future. How's it looking? Yeah. Uh, the big picture for me is looking down the road so it's not just looking at where we are where we are today it's looking at what we're trying to accomplish and trying to really build a development model here that's going to benefit this team in the future the key to the big picture everyone looking in the same direction Next time on The Leaf, Leafs Nation is everywhere.